Okay. That's that's pretty good. Let's double check and make sure I've got all that done. Yeah. This one's rotating on the pin a little bit. So and the pin is a little corroded down here at the tip. Let's see how bad how bad it is. Take my tweezers and just stroke it a little bit and see if I can there might be a little glue on it from when it was attached yeah the pin seems good sometimes the pin can corrode it'll get rusty and uh, I can gently pull the pin out and put a fresh one in but I think this will do I'm going to need to put some glue um, at the bottom of this pin so that the butterfly doesn't rotate around on the pin once it's in there. Alright, that one looks good. So, let's have a look at the mail. About this side, you can see it's a bit tattered. And that's going to be really fragile. That might be a challenge to get that to set without breaking it off. Well, let's give it a try. Hmm. That's kind of scary. Ooh, it's working. It almost came loose. Okay, I got a little bit on it. I think I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. I can still see through it a little bit. Try and fix that. I'm going to put my finger on it. Oh yeah, much better. Okay, I just got a little glass cleaner here. I'll do the outside first. There's a little bit of gunk. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll clean the rest of this up. I've got the glass all clean on the box, and you can see I put a little dot of um, Sharpie in the center where I took that off. And I'll measure it too to make sure it's right, but that's just a reference point. Now, it, originally there was a piece of cork in here to stick the pin in. And um, and that's you know not a bad idea, but I don't really like that as much. I use uh, foam core 
foam cores paper with foam in the core. And uh, I find this works good if I have to attach a specimen to glass or some smooth surface. I'll cut a little circle of this and I'll stick the pin in that and then I'll glue the pin into it um, as well so that it doesn't uh, come out. Uh, sometimes it doesn't take much for it to knock loose. So I'll cut um, a little square And then I'll uh, cut the edges off of the square and make it kind of round, because I think that looks better. I mean, I, I kind of get the idea of having a box with glass on both sides. You can flip it over and see the underside of the specimen, but I mean, how often do you really do that? If it was a research collection, um, yeah, when I volunteered to work at the Natural History Museum in London, most of their boxes had glass on both sides, so you could examine the underside of a specimen without having to take it out. So, you know, that that makes sense. But for a display like this where it's hanging on the wall, I mean, some butterflies and moths have a different and attractive underside, but most of them don't. Most of them look best on top. They really don't need a, to see the bottom. So I just cut the square, cut, keep cutting the edges off the square until I have a nice little round disc to stick the pin in. So I'll make two of those. I'm going to try and uh, paint the abdomen a little bit because they're kind of brown and they really should be black. I've got some flat black uh, acrylic model paint. These are for like model airplanes or whatever. And um, I think I want to thin this out a little bit too. Might be a little thick. So I'm going to mix it with just a little bit of water just to thin it out a little bit. And let's, uh, let's try this. Got a little fine brush here. Yeah, I think it'll look better. Okay. Just give it a shot. I'm going to try it on the bottom first to see how well it sticks. Oh, yeah. It seems to be working. All right. Oh yeah, that's going to look much better. And it's flat, so it won't be shiny. Flat black. I don't have any trouble putting some paint or some dye on an old specimen to make it look more like it did when it was fresh. It's sort of like uh, you see fish mounted, and they, uh, they're all painted because the natural color of the fish disappears after it's dead. Let that dry. Do the nail. I've been experimenting with um, alcohol-based artist ink, which uh, 
seems to work really well for coloring insects. It even goes into the butterfly's wings. You might have a butterfly with a red patches and they're really faded out. I dilute some of the dye and alcohol and just dot a little in there. If you get the color mixed up right so it matches, it looks really good. It looks very natural. Yeah, that looks a lot better. You see they have this nice red collar here. See that collar of fur around the thorax that just behind the head. That's an attractive aspect of these butterflies. The female. So since this female's spinning on the pin, I'm going to get a little glue and put it right at the body where the pin comes out. It's kind of between the legs, but I can squeeze it in there. And this will hold the, when it dries, it'll hold the butterfly steady on the pin. Now I've got these anchors, the foam core set in the, uh, where they should be, three and a half inches in the middle, it's seven inches across. Um, and I'm going to glue these down with uh, shoe goo, which is a really strong glue, and it should really hold it in place. Because once we get this thing all sealed back up again, we don't want them coming loose. Um, the little cork bit stayed in place, which was good. I don't know what they used for glue. Um, but, you know, once I get them glued down, then that's going to be where they're going to be. So I'm going to take the butterfly and kind of place it over, just sort of hold it there and see if that looks like it's in the right place to distribute. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So it's just a matter of getting them centered, getting the glue on, and then getting them back in the same spot, which might be a challenge. If I just lay the ruler across, get my head right above the middle. I should be able to measure the center. And then this one. Yeah, that looks about right. I mean, if it's a tiny fraction, a millimeter off, it's not going to matter that much. But, you know, I try to get as good as I can. Now I've got to mark the spot so that I can get it back in the right position. That should do it. Oh wait, I gotta know which... There. Okay. So I'll get a little shoe goo. Just a little. Now try and get it in the right spot. Yeah. I'll do the same thing with this one. Now I've glued the um, mount foam core dots into the correct position in the box. And then I, I cut out another set and glued them on top so it's actually two foam core thick. And I figured that'd be good to hold the pin really thoroughly. This thing's going to be all sealed up tight and I don't want the specimen getting knocked loose. Now. Um, I will put glue on top of this when I put the pin in to really hold it in place. And while I normally use the clear glue for specimen repair, I'm going to use the um, white glue 
uh, to hold the pin in because this is a little thicker and a little stronger. It's, it's uh, opaque so it's hard to see through it when you're putting a pin in but um, I think it will work fine for what I'm doing here. And I guess I'll do the bottom one first. No, I'll do the top one first. So I'll just put a dot of glue on top of that. And that'll dry around the pin and really, you know, hold the pin in place. It's better to overdo it <laughs> in a situation like this. <clears throat> so this would be the male specimen. Now the glue that I applied to the specimen on the bottom to hold the specimen on the pin has dried. So it's not going to spin around once it's uh, mounted in there. And this part's a little tricky. You have to get the pin in straight. I want to get the specimen nice and level. Uh, you can get the pin and start putting it in straight and then by the time you push it in it'll tilt it. So let's just see how well this works. Wish me luck. Okay, I've got the pin just stuck in the very surface of the paper. Now I'm going to adjust the position of it and try and get it nice and flat. Push it in a little farther and then check that. And when I'm looking at the plane of the body and I want that level and also the plane of the wings. And sometimes the wings are tilted a little bit off the plane of the body so you've just got to get it as level as you can. I, I didn't mount this specimen so it is what it is. That actually looks pretty good. Now I'm going to use a little pair of needle nose pliers here and grab that pin and just gently push it and see if I can get a little deeper into that foam core. Yeah. Oh, now I can see the specimen's tilted forward a little bit like this and that is not that's not what I want. So I'm going to pull it out gently. And try again. I'm going to reposition the pen a little bit. That looks good. I'm going to try this again. That actually looks pretty good. I'm going to try and reach underneath and grab the pin at the base and see if I can do that. A little crooked. I'm going to bend it. Turn it. This way. Now, you can tell by the mount that it's not exactly symmetrical the way I would have mounted it. So the body is off a little. The wings are mostly. I want the wings to line up here. Let me see if the pin is in the center of the box. I'm going to put the edge over it. That says 3 and 3 eighths to the edge. And I'll measure it from over here. 1, 2, 3. Boy, that's really good. That really does seem to be the center. See the edge of the wing between here and the frame, and the edge of the wing between here and the frame. I'm going to try and measure that and see what that looks like. Thirteen sixteenths. Yeah. So now we'll try it over here.
Yeah, that looks good. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that. All right. Now we'll try to get the female in there. Okay. Yeah. Yep, I don't think I can improve on that. And then, you know, the distance between the top of the wing and the top of the box and the bottom of the wing down here and the bottom of the box. It looks like it's placed properly in that space. Okay, I'm going to go with that. Now, I want that glue on the bottom of the pins to dry before I put the lid on. So I'm going to let this sit for, you know, a couple hours and make sure that all, everything's all dried out. And then I'll get the lid and attach the lid back on and we'll see how that goes.